Hi everyone, it's Andrew here from Home Theatre Engineering and today we thought we'd give you a quick run through on what actually goes on in a video calibration. Um, behind the camera we've got Enzo. Hello everyone. And Enzo's going to sort of pop up with some questions and, and ask the sort of things that we hope that you guys as an audience would want to ask during a video like this. So first of all, for those of you who don't know, what is video calibration? When a film is made, it's made effectively to a set of standards and then the, um, the creative team make the film look a certain way. For example, in The Matrix, it was filmed in green and blue and that changed depending on whether you were in and out of The Matrix. But a lot of people never really saw that because their TVs or projectors were not properly adjusted. When you buy a TV or a projector off the shelf, it's in uh, some sort of factory mode or maybe dynamic if it's a TV especially. Um, and with a projector, it doesn't matter how good the projector is because when you get it in your room, the amount of ambient light, distance from the screen, the type of screen you've got, whether it's solid, whether it's perforated, whether it's woven, the, the different manufacturers, whether it's a grey screen, all these things massively affect how the picture looks. So. Even a projector that's come out of the factory with, for example, THX settings or ISF calibrated settings still needs to be calibrated. This then produces an amazing result. What you get to see on that projector or TV is a very, very lifelike image. When it's calibrated, you should see exactly what they saw when they were colorizing and editing that film. And it brings an incredible sense of realism our brains work so much better if things like skin tones and textures are more acceptable to the human eye. The other thing you get is a lot more detail. Uh, a good explanation of this is those movies where you're looking down a dark alley made of perhaps, you know, slightly damp black stone. And if your TV is not calibrated, it's just a black patch on your screen. But if it's well calibrated, you get to see the, the moisture and the glint and the detail all the way down and it gives you this amazing sense of three-dimensionalism. So there's a lot of advantages to get, getting your projector or TV calibrated, but the main reason is to get your money's worth. If you spend a certain amount of money and your TV's not calibrated or your projector's not calibrated, you're simply not getting the performance that that product's capable of. So it's absolutely well worth the investment. So what we're gonna do is step through this is the software that I use, it's called Calman, it's made by a company called Portrait Displays and uh, I've been involved with this product actually since its inception. It was created by a guy called Bill Blackwell and um, I uh, communicated with Bill, this used to be a spreadsheet once and in fact I bought the very first commercial version of this software ever made around the world and now well, I can't even remember what version we're on but uh, here we are and this is uh, fully developed for um, not only HD so 1080 Blu-ray and the what they call the Rec 709 color space but also for UHD HDR so it will do um, your HDR HDR 10 Dolby Vision etc and of course your BT 2020 color space Today I'm just going to give you a walkthrough so you sort of understand what actually goes on when a calibrator comes to your house. The first thing we do is set all the equipment up. Um, normally there would be a sensor in the way of the screen here and that's looking at the image. That goes to a computer which is the screen you're seeing here. The projector then generates the test patterns and all of this is measured and gives us the results. This is what we call the pre-calibration screen. So here I've taken a snapshot of a customer's um, projection system and this is the result and I'll walk you through it. This screen here is the red, green, blue balance. This is all part of what we call the grey scale. And from zero, or in fact 10, up to 100, um, these measurements are IRE. Um, these uh, are the scale from uh, black to white on your screen, okay? In these measures, it looks at the balance of red, green, and blue at every point, and that's what makes up our, our gray. And if our gray is on target, um, then we get this gray scale. This is sort of like the canvas in a painting. It's what uh, the artist works on, and if we get this backdrop right, then we can paint the colors on top. It's a sort of rough analogy, but it kind of works. The other window you're looking at here is luminance. This is a, um, what we call gamma, uh, and in um, the UHD HDR space it's called EOTF, Electrical Optical Transfer Function. This is a target point that we have, and it's normally either 2.2 or 2.4 gamma, 
and that sort of depends on how you like your image and how well the room is set up, uh, how dark the room is. Um, and this basically correlates the difference between the electrical signal and the way the human eye sees things. So our aim is to get the target, which in here is the grey line, onto the yellow line. The numbers we won't worry about. There's only really one um, important number, and that is uh, 313329, which is the um, coordinates for white. Um, but there's a lot of other detail in here that we won't worry about today. Over here on this side is our CMS. This is our color management system or color space, and it shows our primary and secondary num um, uh, color locations. So you've got green, red, blue, um, cyan, magenta, and yellow. And you can see that from the readings, these are off target. And this shows here the amount of gamut luminance, so the luminance of each color, how uh, effectively how bright it is, how much light is coming off that color on the screen, and how much error there is. A bit sneaky here because this scale changes all the time, so sometimes when you've finished it can look worse because the scale has reduced. And that's something, it's one of those tricks you need to learn as a calibrator before you start worrying. So we'll just pop to the next screen. Oh, actually, before we do that, so what you can see here is that this projector is not quite right. The gamma is not tracking well. The uh, red, green, blue balance is not too bad at the lower levels, but it spreads out and it's a predominantly blue picture lacking some red at, when you get up to the bright whites. And also our primaries and secondaries are not correct. Enzo, next slide please. All right, so here we are measuring the color temperature of our white, our target white, and our target here is 6,500 Kelvin. Um, and at the moment, this projector is not too bad at all, actually, but I've gone through on the other one, all of the different settings, this is what you don't see me doing, um, to try and find the one that's closest. And our gamma target is, we're aiming for 2.2 on this job. We needed a little bit more snap in the picture and um, at the moment we've got 2.02. Uh, so here, this just gives me an idea and I can go through the different settings on the projector or TV and try and find which one's behaving the best. All right, let's move on. Right, so white point or color space. Again here, I'm looking to see which of the presets in the projector, whether it's dynamic, whether it's cinema, whether it's user, whether it's you know any of the options that are in the projector, which one is actually best for the, uh, the calibration. So I go through the options, I scan each one until we find one that's good. Here, as you'll notice, it's come in a little bit and I normally look for one that's where it has the points outside the space, but on this unit, they were a bit erratic. So I've gone for this option here because I believe I can, I can uh, do more with it. I'm also very mindful because it's not just these colors here that I have to get right, it's all the colors in between. So this is 100% green, 100% blue, 100% red. But I have to try and get from the pure white, which is effectively zero color, um, into the 20, 40, 60, and 80% points. So I need to get it all right. Otherwise, I might get the red or green right, but everything in between would be wrong. So your other tones would be incorrect. Let's move on. Okay, this is just a footnote, so we keep going. Now, this projector is putting out quite a lot of light. It's a small screen, and uh, at the moment, we are looking for somewhere between, in a dark room, 30 to 40 foot lamberts. In a very, very dark room, you know, a theater room, we're looking between 40 and 30, at uh, 14 and 30. In this room, it measured 37.7, which is quite punchy. It's a lot of light. And uh, so he had a, uh, a, a white screen, not perforated, so it's a solid screen. There's a lot of light coming back. And this actually bodes well for the uh, high dynamic range, the HDR image um, on his projector. But today, we're only doing HD. And uh, certainly plenty of light there. And that will probably get reduced a little bit as we go through the calibration. But uh, this is the opposite to a problem I had the other day. Very expensive projector, very big screen, woven screen, and I couldn't even get 14 foot Lamberts. It was 13.9, it was supposed to be a stunning theater, poorly designed, however, and so not enough light on the screen, even for a good 1080 picture, and certainly nowhere near enough light for an HDR image. So 
just bigger isn't always better, especially if you've got big and you've got woven and uh, your uh, projector has got a certain amount of light output, you can really be struggling. Okay, I won't dwell on this too much. Uh, this is where I adjust the brightness and contrast. I can't really show you that at the moment, but what I'm looking for here is clipping. I want to see which of the colors actually aren't making uh, at least a 100% or this is the one point here, but I can see here that it's not until we're well in excess of 100% that we get some clipping in some of the red and green and uh, blue there, but I'm not worried about that, that's well within tolerance for me. Okay, gamma, this isn't too bad now. I'm, I've uh, selected a, a couple of different gamma options and I've taken a preset. Ideally, I would like this to be flat but I don't have the options within this particular projector to do much better. I can do some tweaking in the, uh, the grayscale a little bit, um, but overall it's not too bad. What this is telling me is it's a little bit light in, at, at the darker end of the scale, so the dark is a little bit lighter than it should be, and the, the white, there's a bit of a peak, and it's possibly not quite as bright at this point as it should be for that 2.2 gamma. I hope this is all making sense. How are we traveling there, Enzo? Pretty good, pretty good. We're doing all right? All making sense. Okay, good. Let's go on to the next screen. This is one where we can check the color and tint. Look, these days, folks, the idea of looking through the blue colored filters has pretty much gone. You know, if you listen to someone like Joel at ISF, he will say that these days, the color engine, the thing that actually determines the colors in the projector is pretty damn good. And it's not often that we need to do that and um, on some displays it's questionable as to whether the, the blue filters work. Um, the best way to do this, by the way, is if you have a, uh, a blue switch on your display and then you can um, get uh, just an all blue image and then what you're trying to do is match these up so they should look identical. Um, you don't want a difference in colour here and one is for your, for your actual colour setting and one is for your hue or tint. Okay, but normally, don't touch it. Leave your colour on zero. You're pretty much assured that it's going to be accurate. Okay, so on this page, we are looking basically at the geometry of a projector. And at the top here, uh, we're looking at convergence. The, uh, that's how the red, green and blue cells align, if that is capable in your projector. Here, we're looking at uh, aspect ratio, making sure that the circles are circles, the rectangles are rectangles, and everything fits the screen properly. And here, we're looking at sharpness. Now here's a tip for you. With your sharpness, if you want a sharper picture, turn your sharpness down. Contrary to popular sort of opinion, what happens is when you turn sharpness up, it actually creates a white border around any lines or, or dark areas of the picture. And these are artifacts. And in fact, it makes your picture look worse and it gives you this horrible sort of harsh look. So if you want your picture to look great, generally turn it down to about maybe, if your scale is um, appropriate, probably either five or 10 and see how that looks. And if you can find some black lines, turn it up and you'll see a white glow appear around your lines. Turn it down until that glow disappears completely and that the line looks, looks very neat and sharp. Um, so there's the irony. If you want more a sharper picture, turn your sharpness down. All right, next screen. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're now adjusting our grayscale. We talked about that line with the red, green and blue. And uh, I've, I've already done that here. Uh, the error here is ridiculously low. So what we're looking at here is 30 IRE and 80 IRE. What am I talking about? So from zero to 100%, this is quite dark. If zero is dark, 10, 20 is about 30% light, um, and 80% is about 80% light. So if you imagine a, um, a clothesline, um, we've grabbed the 80% the point and the 30% point, and we're moving them up and down, and we're adjusting the balance so that we get a decent uh, grey uh, at the right colour temperature at each of these points. So this is the colour balance at the moment at, I'm trying to see which one's active, at 30%. So what I would do in, in this projector is I adjust the red, green and blue until they're, they're balanced on the 100. I try not to adjust the green if I can help it and I'm trying to get this target in here to get that 313-329 coordinate and um, then on here, this shows my balance from 30 to 80%. And as you can see, um, the lines are very, very close now. The detail you're looking at here is actually very, very fine. This is 100, this is 102. 101 is about here. 
So this is about 100.5. The error here, um, we call it delta E in this industry, so the, 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 the delta E here is almost nothing at all, uh, and we can't see an error sort of much below about sort of two or three. So this is actually exceptionally good. Okay, let's move on. All right, now, this projector did pose a bit of a challenge when it came to getting the 10 point grayscale. So we've got 10 points now from 10 up to 100. Um, but as you can see, uh, it's a little bit light here, but again, to a very small degree, and the red, green, and blue is tracking. Well, I had limited time on this job, and I would have spent a lot more time just trying to pull this down onto the line, but this is a real-world example, and it shows you, you know, how well um, a projector's behaving. The other thing that was happening was there was uh, some ambient light coming into the room, which we couldn't do much about at that point in time. Uh, so, uh, however, if we look at our error again, it's all well under two. I don't know if you can see that over here. Um, so our error is well under two. So uh, I would have liked to have stayed there for another hour or two playing with this, trying to get it right. We didn't have that luxury, but certainly a very good outcome. I'm not unhappy with that. Okay, let's move on. And then we get to the color management system. So uh, what I'm looking at here is I'm trying to adjust my primary and secondary colors. The primaries being, of course, red, green, blue. The secondaries being cyan, magenta, and yellow. And my um, computer then gives me an option of controlling the change in luminance, change in um, chrominance, and change in hue. Now, just to explain those a little bit, um, the hue effectively rotates the colors around the pattern here. So if the hue is out, so this one's the hue uh, for the cyan is out ever so slightly, so I would probably bring it this way a little bit. Um, and the uh, Chrominance is the saturation, and that would move the colour in and out of this space. Okay. And finally, the luminance, which you can't see, because that's effectively the colour moving this way in the colour space. Okay. So, by getting those right, I then get these in the box. But I have to be careful, as I said, because what really counts also is how they move through their graduated locations from here. If the projector or TV is behaving perfectly, and I get this right, I get my white right, and everything's correct, then we get a great result, and the, the colour engine and the electronics in the, uh, in the projector or TV should get everything on target. But that's not what happens, and um, you know we get a different result with each of the different presets. So you can spend a lot of time going through trying to work out what's what. But with the, uh, with the luminance, what we're trying to do is for... Um, uh, for the primaries, we're trying to optimise the luminance, and for the secondaries, we're trying to optimise the colour or chromaticity. All right. So suffice to say, if you look at the error here, you can barely see any mark on the line. Um, there again, we could probably tweak it a little bit, but the fact of the matter is, this projector actually came out quite well. We'll just move on. Right, and this is a saturation sweep. Now, I've jiggled with this a little bit. First of all, I, I want you to see the, the errors over here. So this is the delta E. Um, anything under about three is arguably invisible to the human eye. We can't see or determine how much error is there. Um, so the only thing out is red at 100%, and we'll see why in a minute, but everything else here is well under. We're, we're looking at, uh, in fact, our delta E is at 0.79, and our maximum delta E is 3.56. Look, not happy with that, but the projector wasn't going to give me an option, so it was a case of get all this right and that wrong. And look, if your Ferrari's just a little bit red, no one's going to complain. So, just moving over here again, keeping Enzo busy on the camera, I'm just going to switch around. So, here we have the colour sweep, as we call it, or the saturation sweep. Now, because this isn't a live job, I can't have the projector doing two things at once, unfortunately. Um, what I had to do was play with these a bit so that each of these would land in the target. When I had the red sitting in its perfect location, these were all out. So all of these were out of their location. So the 20, 40, 60, 80, 
percent spots were all way down here and so the projector wasn't managing that well so what I had to do is sneak this out a little bit and I had to move things around a bit until I got everything as close as I possibly could to an ideal location and that's that's sort of one of the things that you, I guess you need to understand as a calibrator I had to do the same a little bit with the magenta um, the uh, blue sort of plays up a little bit with the hue it starts to skew around but the um, cyan, green and yellow were very very good really um, all things being equal alright let's move on a little bit okay very different story now so here we are looking at um, the clipping and the um, uh, black and white levels so I recheck the contrast and brightness if, if the contrast is too high what happens is we crush all of our whites and that means that um, when you're looking at a sky it's just white you don't see any detail so we bring the contrast down until we've got just the right point and all of the detail is available in your sky pictures the, the uh, brightness and the brightness is your blacks, all right, not your whites. So contrast is your whites, brightness is your blacks. The brightness then, if we have the brightness too high, everything looks washed out and light grey. If it's too dark, if we go too too much, uh, too little brightness, then what happens is everything sort of becomes black and we lose all the detail at the black end. So getting those right is critical because otherwise we don't have the right dynamic range and we don't have a good picture at all. Contrast and brightness are a big... Uh, keys to getting a, a really good picture. Okay, Enzo. So, you can see that what's happened is with the calibration, our peak white luminance has dropped a bit, but it's 31.8. It's absolutely fantastic for a projector, and the picture, I must admit, was stunning. You were there for this calibration, yeah, really, weren't you? Really, really. Yeah, yeah, it, I think impressive. it blew you away, actually, because yeah. we just finished a 4K uh, HDR projector, and it was kind of like, eh. If you it, look anywhere, it's good. Yeah, and then this sure. 1080 picture leapt off the screen, didn't it? It was yeah, absolutely stunning. We were stunning. watching uh, the original 2012 Avengers, yeah. and it just looked, it looked better than the 4K that we had seen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was very impressive. So that just goes to show you, I mean, this is a relatively low budget setup, but because he had uh, a smaller screen, a solid screen, lots of light coming back, the, the projector was relatively close, and um, so we could do a lot with this. The inverse applied on this big job, big screen, woven screen, not enough light, pretty sad result. Okay, so planning and selecting your product is, is you know, really critical and that's why here at Home Theatre Engineering we're really big on the room design and planning. If you don't get your room design and planning right, it doesn't matter how much money you've spent, folks. I mean, this, this was a big cinema room. They spent a fortune on the screen and spent a fortune on a picture and, uh, you know, they got a really bad result. And no amount of calibration will fix a lack of light. Um, there's nothing you can do. Get a better projector, get more light, get a smaller screen. But in that configuration, this guy on a much lower budget had a far, far better picture. Planning is everything. Okay, so we'll just move on from there. Uh, if we go on to post calibration, please. Right, so um, again, this just is a, a quick check of everything that we've done. It's a sweep. It shows our colour outputs. We'll jump on because it's pretty much the same as the previous screen. Right, the colour checker. This is where the uh, rubber meets the road. And if your colour checker is not right, then um, you haven't done a good job. Um, and what this does is it biases towards things like skin tones. So this is just a way of me checking that I've actually got a good result during my calibration. And these colours should match up. Um, the, uh, the bottom one is the target. It's what it should look like. And the top one here is the actual. And as you can see, pretty dark. Yes, I can't actually see one there that I can, I think I don't see a change anywhere. And that's because our delta error here is ridiculously low. Um, and again, more time spent on the projector. Had I been there for you know more hours, we probably could have refined the result. But an, a delta E, I would say we've got a, an average delta E of somewhere around probably 0.7. Um, and of course the red that we talked about, which is, you know, we had to push out to get everything else right. But the result of that has been that by, by pushing that red out, everything else is very close to its target. And you can see here that all of the dots are here. Now this black, that's a bit errant. That's uh, a, a basically a, uh, uh, a 10 IRE black. And if there's any ambient light in the room, that will kick that off target. Um, but we don't worry about that too much here. So, uh, there you go. 
Um, most of these are very close to their points, and for uh, a basic calibration that was done quite quickly, um, exceptionally good results. And certainly when we saw the final picture, we, we were uh, over the moon. And uh, ironically, the red actually still looks really good. Yeah, um, you can see a slight difference. This one's, um, you know, perhaps... Actually, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty, good. pretty I mean, hard to tell, so, yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, again, I hadn't seen an HD picture, a uh, Blu-ray picture, that looked this good for quite some time. I was, I was very, very happy. Um, you can do better, for sure, but you need time to do that. Okay, next, uh, next slide, or next page, I should say, because these aren't slides. Yeah. These are the settings, we'll move on from that. And this is what we call the post-calibration view. Now, I talked about this scale here. If we have a look at the errors, very, very little indeed. Quite a lot of consistency. Um, some of the ambient light in the room, which we had little control over, has affected this. The gamma, um, again, ambient light in the room, and um, our CMS, almost on target. So, look, I, given, again, that this was a fairly quick calibration on, on a, quite a basic system, uh, the results are... Uh, are spectacular and and that's it folks um, there's not much more to show you but if you want to know that what goes on in a calibration but rest assured the difference is is night and day and um, I guess f as a little bit of a talking point I've been doing this for I think about 15 years and um, I actually offer a money-back guarantee and, and I say to people if you don't see a, a a noticeable difference in your display I will give you your money back I will reset your projector or TV the way it was but I'll give you your money back and so far uh, you know um, all things being equal uh, every time we've done a calibration we've been able to produce a significant improvement in picture and people are blown away now this is just HD this is 1080 Blu-ray Rec 709 a similar process is for HDR but you need more light folks you need light on the screen this projector actually um, was, was not bad we're looking between say about 35 to 40 foot lambits on the screen um, and uh, then you're starting to cook with gas as far as HDR goes and uh, uh, there are some special algorithms that are being used now um, especially by portrait displays to manage uh, the, uh, the HDR the high dynamic range profile for projectors uh, and uh, we're right on the cutting edge with that, so uh, that's it. Okay, now there is one other way that you can get a far better calibration. Normally, we manipulate these points, the primaries and secondaries, but there's another way to do this, and it's called a LUT calibration. It stands for lookup table, and you need that uh, capability either in your display or in a device like a Lumigen Radiance Pro. That's a video processor. It does a lot of things, but it does allow me to talk to it directly with this software. And instead of just working on these points, uh, and you know that issue I had trying to line up all the, the 20, 40, 60, and 80% points, it actually doesn't work with these points. It works with thousands or hundreds of thousands of points in a three-dimensional color space. And uh, that calibration can take hours and hours and hours. In fact, it can go for all day. It can go overnight and measuring many, many, many points in, in this color space and accurately lining everything up. So when you look at the end result, it is absolutely perfect. And uh, if you do this for, um, especially for high dynamic range, the result is spectacular. A good example of this is um, uh, in the uh, World's Greatest Showman, um, his jacket there is is an amazing colour that most people have never seen, and, and you won't see it unless your projector is really well calibrated and capable of that full BT2020 or DCI colour space. Anyway, um, so uh, if you if you are really particular about your picture and you want a great result, then you need to pair up your display with a Lumigen Radiance Pro. Um, and there is one other way to really boost your picture, and uh, we'll talk about that now briefly. If you are sitting at home watching um, 4K, ultra high definition, high dynamic range content, and you're looking at that on an anamorphic screen, I'll bet a dollar that you are using anamorphic zoom. And if you are, then you haven't seen high dynamic range in, in 4K. You simply haven't, because you're not using all the pixels in your projector. And what's more is, you're losing a lot of light, because you've actually blanked off a third, of the to um, a third of your screen, uh, half of that at the top, half of that at the bottom. And so that light 
is, is deflected inside the projector. It's, it's not transmitted or released and uh, the pixels are closed in. In fact, you throw away more pixels doing anamorphic zoom than there are in an entire 1080p image. That's kind of staggering. That's what you're throwing away when you use anamorphic zoom. Now, if you put an anamorphic lens in front of your projector, then suddenly you get back all of your pixels and all of your colour. And trust me when I say, and Enzo's witnessed this recently, sure if you put an anamorphic lens in front of an HDR projector, it is night and day. Um, what was the video we were watching the other day? Well, we watched a few, but um, the one that was most impressive was Blade Runner. Yeah, Blade oh, Runner yeah, that was, was stunning. Whacking yeah. the, the lens in yeah. front and just seeing the, the difference straight away, the yeah. detail, the depth. It looked like a, it looked like an oil painting, and yeah. you look three D. Yeah, it, it look it was absolutely stunning, folks. So again, you know, and if you want the world's most powerful combination, I think of of image, then I would say uh, Lumigen Radiance Pro projector and anamorphic lens, and then you're absolutely cooking with gas. Look, that's a decent investment, but it's an investment that will last you hopefully the rest of your life, and uh, you will uh, never see. You will never see an image in a commercial cinema that is anywhere near that, that grade of quality. Um, and the resolution and the depth and the detail is stunning. Finally, what should you be expecting from high dynamic range? A lot of people have seen high dynamic range and either been underwhelmed with it or thinking that that's the best you get. With a calibrated projector, your high dynamic range should look like you are looking through a beautifully crystal clear window out into a three-dimensional world and until you see it uh, it's hard to explain but when you do see it you'll get it and you'll know exactly what you're looking at most projectors these days are capable of that if they're properly calibrated so I promise you if you're using anamorphic zoom and you're not calibrated then you are seeing a very very small part of the total performance of your projector is it worth the investment well, of course I think so, but that's how I earn my living. But the fact of the matter is, I haven't had an unhappy customer yet. So have a think about it. Consider um, calibration. As a, as a last note, I had a guy recently who bought uh, quite a cheap TV and came to me and he said he wanted to calibrate. The calibration was more than the cost of the TV. And his argument was, well, I've spent less on my TV. I'm getting it calibrated. It will look as good as or better than an uncalibrated TV of two or three times the value interesting logic and I couldn't really argue with it and certainly when we finished it had actually calibrated up very well indeed. So there you go folks that's a little bit of a, about calibration. Sorry it's gone on for so long hopefully uh, you were able to stick with me. Any questions Enzo? No look I think it's pretty straightforward and I mean I'm learning a lot here but I think it's uh, very interesting that the fact that there's probably 90% of people that are in home really really into home theatre have, don't have their projectors or TVs calibrated. Yeah. Uh, and, and that statistic is staggering. Yeah. You know, and the fact that you can pick up so much of that performance that's left on the floor mm. and, and, you know, make an image so much better. I mean, the example was the guy that had a system for, you know, 10 years and was blown away by the video and the audio calibration. Yeah. And he's like, I've had this for 10 years. I can't believe I've been missing out. Yeah. Yep. Um, so that's the part that's uh, very, very intriguing. Look, at Home Theatre Engineering, we're all about extracting performance. You, you shouldn't normally, or you may not, perhaps, have to pay more or, or upgrade your equipment. Just extract the performance that your equipment's always been capable of. You deserve to get all of the performance you've paid for. So when calibration is available to you, that's exactly what you achieve. You extract every drop of performance out of your equipment and trust me, we do exactly the same with audio and uh, that blows people away. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you on our next video.